it seems like one of those curiosities about uh, vampires is how many people get designated as being a vampire after they're dead. Seems like that might be the only way to get designated a vampire. And um, some people uh, are very, very dead before they get designated a vampire. And I'm thinking specifically of Nellie Vaughn and oh. how it was... She'd been dead a long, 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 long time before anyone sure. called her a vampire. Um, I understand that it, she doesn't. Ha she didn't have to go through any of the same uh, <laughs> desecration that Mercy Brown had to go through. But what happened right. in the community? Do you think that made her the target of uh, a vampire belief? Well, no. Here's the way I've heard the story. Uh, that a teacher, uh, a teacher in in one of the towns in Rhode Island, uh, told his or her students uh, about Mercy Brown, the story of Mercy Brown. Uh, apparently, the teacher did not know the name or give the name. Just said this this was this young girl whose body was exhumed down in, in the southern part of Rhode Island. This the teacher was in more of the central northern part western part of Rhode Island, and said it was down in the cemetery off of Victory Highway, which is Route 102. They call it Victory Highway sometimes. And so one night, uh, some students got together and said, let's go find the vampire. Well, they managed to get not all the way down to Exeter, which is uh, the, the cemetery in Exeter where Mercy is, is on Route 102, the Chestnut Hill Cemetery. But they got as far as the cemetery in uh, West Greenwich, which is north of, of Exeter, between where they with students were from and where Mercy was buried. So they didn't get all the way down to Mercy's mm -hmm. cemetery. But they found another cemetery, and they went in there. They said, well, maybe this is the right one. And they saw a tombstone. It's Nellie L. Vaughn. She was 19 years old, died in 1889. And on the tombstone was the inscription, I am waiting and watching for you. So, if See, it could seem creepy if it was read in the right tone. Yeah. You're high school students and, you know, you just learn how to drive and you're doing a little legend trip. You're going out there and getting all spooky. And then you see this inscription, I am waiting and watching for you. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Must be the vampire. So, I think this was probably in the 1960s, maybe the late 1960s, something like that. Uh, so by 1970s, Nellie Vaughn had become a, a legendary vampire. And kids were going, well, mostly kids, not always, but people were going out to the cemetery in West Greenwich and, you know, to the point where actually the stone was broken over and lying on the ground. And of course, part of the belief started getting attached to it, including uh, no grass grows on her grave. Well, no, because you know people are walking on it all the time. But no, no grass grows on the grave of a vampire. We know that. Sure. So everyone knows that. Yeah, that just cemented the the legend. So I've tried to I've tried to dispel that legend because. I, uh, you know, as a folklorist, I really, I enjoy legends. I like stories, whether they're true or not. But sometimes um, a legend can do uh, damage. That is when people decide they're going to go out to the cemetery where something supposedly happened or another site and then start vandalizing the site. Uh, then it's gone and fun. Why do you think it is, this, despite the availability of facts to the contrary we can't help but make certain people vampires whether it's Nellie Vaughn or Seaman James Brown or even Vlad the Impaler we we just can't let go of that idea that this person may have been a vampire well i mean the whole vampire idea is is a very attractive idea it's repulsive and attractive at the same time and in fact just that aspect of it being two sides of one same coin makes it appealing too. I mean, we are attracted to being repulsed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Obviously, our horror movies and 
and horror and gothic novels just wouldn't exist. So it's our love, of, you know, the one folklorist called it the uh, the chill of fright. <laughs> we like to have our hair stand on end. Ooh, it's scary. I mean, it gets our adrenaline going, but with most of the vampires, it's it's a safe way to be frightened mm -hmm. because down we know they're not real. It didn't. They're not true. Or are they? For some that's, people, that might that, not well, be the there's case. Another aspect that makes it very attractive. Mm -hmm. It's also not on the cusp of being repulsive and, and attractive at the same time. It's also on the cusp of being believable or unbelievable. It's in that gray area, and that's where that's where legends exist. <laughs>